Welcome to Grow As We Grow number 10. This is a perk membership series where members can send me in video questions, tours of their garden. I incorporate them into a short tour of my garden. It's a great way just to get ideas that you can use in your gardens. This is my greenhouse. Right in here, I am doing divisions throughout my property. This is all the materials that I'm using. I've got some vermiculite in there. If I'm doing seed starting, I'll show you the inside of my greenhouse in a second. Leaf grow bag top soil, all kinds of different things. And I just make up my own mixes for the divisions. I'm doing a lot of fruit canes right now, um, goji berries, those are the ones right in here. Those are going into these gallon containers, or half gallon containers. I'm gonna be doing a plant sale next year. So I'm using what I have on my property to really create basically inventory. It's free, it's a lot of fun, and I gotta clean out those plants anyway because they're getting too big so I might as well sell them make a little bit of extra money to support my garden habit this is my greenhouse we just had a frost last night our second frost let me let the door shut here for a second it's really loud I'm growing perennial herbs right now they can take a light frost this is an unheated greenhouse I have all kinds of herbs set up right now and they survived the cold just fine that's oregano I have chives I have sorrel, all kinds of different things. Because it's unheated, that means you're not going to be able to grow warm weather crops here in Maryland because it's just going to get too cold. But now's a great time to start your perennial flowers, your perennial herbs. They can take a frost. They can take that cold. Now, I'm not going to get a deep frost really until later December. I may bring the heater in here, take care of these plants, but these are all going to be grown now with the idea that these are going to go out to um, the basically the plant yard sale that I'm going to be doing. Here's another greenhouse. I want you to take a look at what Gail has done on her property. It's a beautiful build. It'll give you some ideas of what you may want to do on your property. Hi everybody, this is Gail from Two Gals, Vermont. Here we are in uh, 4B and it's starting to get to be fall. You can see the leaves starting to change. But I wanted to show you just a short video today about our new addition to our gardening efforts. It's been several years in the making trying to get this thing built. But um, here we are, it's finished. This is our new greenhouse. We had to clear this land and cut some trees down. The grass is still growing. We have some drainage issues that we'll take care of and it'll all be landscaped around the outside and we'll have some more planting areas but let's go inside i'll show you what's going on inside we're not too far from the house so it's convenient but it's the best spot we have a screen door we have two winter outside doors it's um 12 by 16. we're in the inside of the greenhouse which we really like, have a front door and a back door here that goes out to what's gonna end up being our meadow. Oh, the door's latched. This is all gonna be a, a meadow as soon as we get it cleared out. But um, well, we had it constructed, it was all done by hand. It's all wood, polycarbonate. We have two vents that automatically open on each side. We have two vents on each side in the roof, a solar fan, and lots of room for growing. So that's kind of cool. We started out with two benches. The benches are um, perfect height. We need to put some shelving underneath here for storage. We have a shelf up here where I have my potting supplies, starting to put things together in here. These benches are pretty cool because they're lined with a material that is waterproof and will protect the wood, but it also has wicking cloth in it. And um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna use that yet, but we had the wicking cloth in here. The benches will probably be have one on one side, one on the other, to space it out. But we're still trying to figure out the space. This is a 15, a 16 foot shelf. And it is 60 degrees outside. And right now with the greenhouse, 
closed up, it is 85 degrees in here. So that's pretty cool. So this is our greenhouse. Um, the plan is to overwinter some of our herbs that we have in the garden. Take them out, put them in the greenhouse. I'm gonna put a green stalk probably over here in this corner and maybe one over here in this corner. So we're gonna do some leafy greens and such in here. But we're really excited to be able to start growing in the greenhouse. It's like a regular, regular building, all built to code. It should take care of our Vermont snow loads. Very well built. I helped lift some of the sides up, which was really exciting. So there you have it. We have a little, I'll show you the little pad that needs to be fixed on the outside. On both sides, um, both sides of the greenhouse, we have a little bit of walk-in space here, which we'll have to expand a little bit. We have some big rocks um, that were on the property that will be um, built into our landscape. Some may be moved. But anyway, there's our greenhouse. We're really excited about it. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see what we can get cooking for the next season and over the winter. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. I love your greenhouse, Gail. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I think you're going to have a lot of fun in there. I am looking forward to learning how to use mine. Again, you're going to need heat. There's no way to keep heat in a greenhouse when the temperatures drop into the 20s unless you have a heater. So you really want to be thinking about that if you're trying to grow crops that are not frost tolerant, but it's perfect for seed starting right now. This is my muscadine. It's a beautiful grape-like fruit. Um, I've harvested a lot of them. There's still some on here and they taste so much better when they get touched by a light frost. But I am totally in fall garden mode. The temperatures got down to 27 degrees last night. I've cleaned out a lot of my beds. Just did a video on here. Um, set this up for next year. Some of the things that you can do in the fall if you're not growing fall crops is you can start prepping your beds now. Let them sit for that four, five, six months. Let all the organic granular fertilizer break down. Just let them get set up and come spring, you're ready to plant. Lots of cool weather crops in. Here are my fruit towers. Right in there I have leafy greens. Let's take a look at Angela's garden. She has a garden full of the leafy greens and we're all really transitioning into that fall, cool time of the year. Remember, the leafy greens can actually freeze through a lot of times. We're going to be walking by pepper plants and stuff that are all dead from the frost. But your cool weather garden, your cool weather crops can take frosts. So it's a beautiful day in October. I believe it's the 21st and I'm heading up to my garden. Fall garden is looking pretty good. Right side here, I have several different types of kale in these five gallon buckets, um, and one of them has Swiss chard, which I've never grown before. I'm looking forward to trying it. And I have cauliflower in this raised bed. But I have some different types of lettuce and arugula. Um, I just planted some radish. So those little seedlings are coming up. I think they're the uh, French breakfast radishes. And I had a couple of extra kale plants, so I stuck those in there. Um, 
in these pots in the corner, I have those, the milk crates. Um, I have peas, and these are shelling peas. They were Lincoln is the variety. Um, so, so far, I just, I pulled one off just to taste them. They were really good. One of my sons really loves peas, so he's kind of looking forward to that. And there's the other pea plant. So there's lots of pods on there. Hopefully we'll get, you know, enough for a few servings of peas. Or a few meals of peas. And then, I have my lettuce table. I'm a little disappointed. I'm not sure if I'll do it again this coming year. These, I direct sow these seeds and it's been a long time and they're just really slow to grow. Um, the one, the lettuce in the raised bed look much better. So we'll have to see. Maybe I'll try um, starting inside early in the spring and see if I can get some you know, full size plants to be able to harvest. Um, but like I said, right now I'm just a little bit disappointed in it. strawberries in that small tower that was from the Dollar Tree but I did purchase one of the rusted garden red green stalks that I am looking forward to putting up in the spring and I'll probably transplant um, strawberries into that and maybe some lettuces but that's it I'm looking forward to eating from this fall garden we've have had some of the kale so far and I'm hoping to get some cauliflower heads and broccoli heads um, before you know the weather um, gets too much colder but it's been it's just been perfect so I hope you enjoyed it hope you all have a wonderful fall gardening season take care your kale plants look really healthy Angela they look wonderful this is a red romaine it's a nice compact heading romaine and the reason I say that is it's forming a head right now. It's not bolting. If you come down to this variety, I think this was a speckled romaine. It's bolted. It's flowered. It's not forming a nice head. We had 80 degree temperatures last week, believe it or not. Frost last night, frost tomorrow. Sometimes when you're checking out the different varieties, you know, you buy them based on how they look, which is great. But once they get into your garden, test them out. Like I'm not going to grow the speckled romaine anymore into the fall because it just doesn't do well with the heat. It wants to bolt, it wants to flower right away. So this variety of red romaine, it's just called red romaine by the way, um, I'm going to keep. I mean that's just a beautiful little head for making, you know, a lunch salad. As I was saying, the cold is here now, the frost is here now, the peppers have all been killed off and that's one of the things, you know, we try and do. Like with this extended warmth now that we get here in Maryland, the tomato plants, the pepper plants, they were doing pretty well. But I knew that the night temperatures were getting colder. And even if they were starting to flower, it was only a matter of time before the frost rolled in and killed them. And you can see still some pockets of frost right on that bib lettuce. And the cool thing about these leafy greens is they can freeze. The leaves can freeze and they're just going to thaw on their own as soon as it warms up and they're going to keep growing. Let's take a look at Brent's tour. He's kind of giving an ode to all the PERC members that have been um, in the chat rooms. So when we do the PERC memberships Q&A, we do the live classrooms, it's becoming really a nice tightly knit group of gardeners who help each other out and these are some of the things that he's learned. Hello everyone and Gary's channel. In this video I want to sort of pay tribute to everyone in the PERC membership. And um, so through this video, I'm gonna show everyone um, stuff that I've learned from the PERC membership, from Gary as well, in some of the PERC membership series. Um, there's a lot of collaboration there, and I just wanted to kind of show some of the things that I'm doing and how I'm relating to the other members. So I wanted to start with this, just to make a point. Um, this is kind of embarrassing to show, but I feel really, comfortable with the Perk member community. So this is what I call my gardening garage. Um, and it looks exactly just like that. And if you garden as much as I do, you just sort of get burnt out and you don't have the time. There's stuff to tend actively in the garden and you just sort of throw things in here. So that's really what it looks like. Now, this is definitely something that's on the list of items when the months of December, January, February 
roll around. There's not a lot to do outside. I can easily come in here and restore it and refresh it. Colorado zone five or six, depending on the season. And we got temperatures down to about 37. I can sort of see my breath um, for the first time this season. Interesting though, um, there was a frost advisory and the leaf surfaces are totally fine. If I go over just to the car, it's pretty interesting. These are ice crystal formations right there. You can kind of see it. Um, just really fascinating to me where frost actually condenses and forms and certain surfaces like leaves where they don't. So I wanted to incorporate a perk member question into my Grow As We Grow video, just because I think some people could benefit from this as well. My question for you, Gary, is I have all of these different types of container peppers that I wanna overwinter. You can see that they're in various stages of going dormant. So for example, I have this pepper, which was placed more in the front of my yard. And I have another pepper here that uh, is a Serrano type, a different type variety that is still green. And then I also even have some that are still trying to flower and form buds. So my question is for you, Gary, what is the best ideal time and stage of these various pepper plants to prune them back, um, leaves and all to do the V formation to store ultimately my garage to overwinter them. Another perk member does this and I really appreciate that that person shared it with the group because I also do this. So I have a green stock tower. We're definitely gonna get some nights that are not only frosts, um, but we're also gonna get a lot of heavy freezes. So what I really like about this green stock tower is I have this wheelie caddy down here. And what I can simply do is at night, I can just wheel it into my garage. It's gonna keep it nice and warm, gonna prevent it from freezing, and I'll be able to extend my season this way. And I think it's a great idea um, for anybody who maybe lives in a cooler zone. Um, this is next to my gas line. It is a nice dill plant growing out of my rock bed. Not fertilized, not taken care of, lots of weeds going in here. And so some of the things that I've realized in just talking through perk membership and through Gary all the time is you look at these two plants, sunflowers and dill, I've had such a hard time babying them over and over again in the spring to seed and form. What I wanna do is an experiment this year and I'm gonna start scattering these throughout my garden in the fall. And I'm just gonna kinda of see what happens. The voluntary plants that I don't want that come up, I'll just pick. Uh, the voluntary plants that I do want, I will just kinda of keep in those sort of spaces. So I'll kind of be a little bit strategic. And so they're not in a place where I definitely don't want them. But I'm gonna treat this as kind of an experiment to go, this is sort of what nature does. And that's what I've really learned through talking with the community is you wanna to try to mimic nature as much as possible. Just to end on a positive note, um, just wanted to show something that I'm planning for, for the winter. Um, I have all these grow light setups inspired by Gary. I'm gonna try to grow them in my insulated garage. So I said it's insulated. I'm gonna be able to hopefully plant some cool leafy greens, see how they do. Um, they're gonna stay cooler here than they are indoors. Thank you so much from the Colorado Front Range and hope everyone has a great day. If you're interested in the Perk membership, um, just check out my YouTube channel. There's a join button. As Brent was saying, it's a really nice, tight-knit community. You know, a great group of people helping each other out, sharing ideas. And I think we've been up and going for just about a year now. Here's another example of the frost going across my spinach. As it gets deeper into November, December, the frost are going to get heavier and stronger. And the ground is frozen. Like if I push on here now, there's a little bit of freeze. When the ground starts freezing to a depth of about an inch or so, that's when your cool weather crops are going to start dying off. But believe it or not, these guys are going to be perfectly fine as the warmth rolls in.
So these are my super hot peppers. There's three of them. They tend to grow more slowly. I've taken off most of the peppers, um, really yesterday, before the heavy frost came. I'm going to be saving the seeds. So, well, number one, when I saw your garage, uh, Brent, I was like, well, that's not really so bad. But you're absolutely right. A lot of things can wait till December or January. You know, we have only so much time on our hands. We've got to take care of family. We have jobs and stuff. So take care of the garden garages and places like that or corners of yards can be taken care of later. To answer your question, when the nights are starting to get into the 40s, your peppers are pretty much done and that's a great time to cut them down. So I'll be cutting this pepper down, really down to about here and just leaving that woody growth. The whole pot's going to come out, it's going to go into my sunken container garden or we'll go into a place that's going to stay warm. What you're trying to do is keep the roots alive, keep that uh, upper growth from freezing through, plants go dormant, and then when you plant them next year, they have these massive root systems that are alive, and they just, you know, come back like wildfire, and that's the whole goal behind there. But when the nights are dropping into the 40s, you can go ahead, get your uh, pepper plants set up to go into your garage or your house or wherever you get to put them so you can overwinter them. Here are some more cool weather crops. These are French breakfast radishes, leaves frozen, and in case you're wondering, the ice crystals that form when these leaves freeze don't disrupt the cells of the leaves. They don't damage them. They're able to kind of manage. So they just perk right back up when the warmth comes. Warm weather crops, if they get frozen, the ice crystals, crystals disrupt the cells, damage the leaves, and your plants die off. So all my tomatoes, uh, the potatoes, we're going out there in a second. You'll see them. They are frozen and dead. I still have baby potatoes in there. That was an experiment for me to see how many successions of potatoes I could get into the ground and still get in harvest. Right down here I have onion transplants. I put these in about six weeks ago and the whole idea is for them just to get established now over winter here in Maryland and they'll come back nice and strong in the spring and I'll get beautiful onions, nice bulbs. Let's take a look at Rebecca's garden. She's going to talk about Egyptian walking onions. Hello again from Central Virginia on this gorgeous, gorgeous October afternoon, mid-October afternoon. Today I'm going to show you some more about Egyptian walking onions. Today I'm going to show you how to plant them and kind of how they're, how they're doing just right now. Um, Egyptian walking onions are perennial onions and you use them just like you use regular onions uh, with a couple of nice benefits. One is you can use every single part of the onion. I have here in my hand the bulbs that I'm going to plant today and you can see that they come in different sizes. What's different about a walking onion is it will develop little onion sets at the end uh, and they're just little new bulbs. Those bulbs will often sprout another stem and produce another cluster of uh, little bulbs or bulbels they're called. And you can just um, save them as they come in and dry them and plant them in the fall as I'm going to do today. But the other cool thing about them, which is how they get their name of walking onions, is they will flop over and these can just plant themselves in the ground. Last year I just started planting little patches of walking onions in a variety of spots and I felt like they would be nice on the perimeters of beds and might even help keep some things out of there like little bowls and things like that. And you can see that there is a row of Egyptian onions that I planted and they are going. Now here's an example of the mature one and you can see it is dried, the main part is dried and you can see that it has these little ball bells on the end and look at them sprouting. And you can see over here brand new ones coming up that had sprouted, uh, that had planted when the uh, stalk fell over. And so I have a little patch that is beginning in this area and I'm just going to continue to add into this area and perhaps we'll end up with a nice big huge patch of onions on this edge. This is a super easy thing to plant. For a big cluster like this I'm actually going to pull these apart and each one of these will produce an onion and those will produce more onions and a little um, in, a, in a cluster. For tiny ones like this I am tempted just to plant half or all of this little cluster of, of bulbells and they will grow. I'm just going to fill in where there are no onions and uh, you can see, you know, they plant themselves 
but I'm just going to add some back in here. This one is uh, both very nice firm bulbs. You want to make sure that you start with good firm bulbs. I'm going to pull these two apart. You're going to plant the root side down, the pointy side up. They don't go real deep. You can actually let the tops just bud out like that. This guy in here. And they will just take off. I'm going to pull that mulch back around. I'm really going to make a thick border right along this, um, this wood chip path because I really do want to be able to keep rodents out of my garden. Now take a look at this one. This one has a nice little sprout coming out, so I know that's viable. But this side is soft and gushy, so it's going to go bye-bye. I'm going to pull the mulch around closely. Dried leaves are perfectly fine to have around. Now, you can take these shoots and just trim them just like, uh, you know, you would use chives or green onions, and you can eat those right now. These are super, super hardy. Let's just take this little bundle here and just pop it right in the ground. That's right like that. No, they will grow. So you might want to know what they taste like and how I have used them. As I said, I didn't harvest a ton of the larger bulbs. The larger bulbs don't look exactly like onions. They look more like, uh, shaped more like a shallot, but bigger. So they're kind of um, uh, elongated onions and they taste like onions. I mostly use them for the greens on top and I'll just come out and snip a green and I'll, I'll use it just like a green onion. So that's all there is to planting Egyptian walking onions. Super, super, super easy, super tasty, perennial. So, and I would say pretty much carefree. I'm gonna try and add Egyptian onions to my garden next year. Potatoes, frozen through, still frost on there. Some more onions right in there. And these were all potatoes in here. I knew that the frost was gonna take them out, but I'm gonna have a lot of baby potatoes in there. I can even see some, if you have a good eye, right on the surface. So I got potatoes out of here, and I think I planted these, let's just say, beginning of August. These were some of the potatoes that I harvested earlier in the year. I just, you know, took care, them, took care of them for a while, put them in the ground, and they grew. Potatoes aren't just a crop that you plant in the spring, harvest once. You can at least plant them twice in most gardens. I have more peppers in here. All these jalapenos, left them on there. They're all gonna be cut up and I'm gonna be taking seed from all of those. All right, let's take a look at Stacy's garden. Stacy, I was able to fix the video file. There was just a, a tag on there that wasn't there. I was able to put it in. Anyway, she's gonna take a tour of her garden, show you what's going on. She's getting the cold coming in and she's gonna talk a little bit about taking care of tomatoes that are still on the vine. Hi everyone, it's Stacy, your Urban Chicken Mama. Welcome back to the Rooted Heart Garden. Let's talk fall gardening for a minute. Today is October 18th. So in fall, the sun starts to set earlier, the temperatures aren't as warm, and what am I gonna do with this massive amount of green tomatoes that I have? Well, I'm gonna try and turn them red as best I can. So what do you do? You strip all of the leaves off the bottom, all of the brown, all of the dying, get rid of all of that. Let it have every bit of energy going into ripening the tomatoes that are on the vine. You also want to top them off. So if there's any new growth, like I should have cut that, um, any flowers, and you want to top them so they're not trying to produce any new tomatoes. They're just trying to ripen what is already there. It's 70 degrees today, and at night it's still 50-ish, so I am just gonna let them be on the vine so I can get as many of them pink as possible. And then I will take this one, for example, I will put it in the house in a uh, paper bag, 
and I will close that paper bag up because then the gas, gases that tomatoes let off will be trapped inside the ethane gas and that will help to ripen the tomatoes even more. So basically I've got these barren tomatoes that don't look so cute but oh my gosh, I have so many unripe ones that I wanna do the best I can to get them ripe as possible. And worst case scenario, I'm gonna do fried green tomatoes of some kind or some green salsa, something like that. So here we are in the side back area of my garden and look, so many more green tomatoes. So it only makes sense to do everything I can to get them as ripe as I can before it turns too cold at night and it's not warm enough in the day to do anything. This time of year, beans are still growing strong for me. So I pick the beans, I collect as much as I can, and then I will trim them, put them in the freezer, and preserve them in some capacity, sometimes just freezing, sometimes I'll can. I've got lots and lots of lettuce still happening. So I will continue to let the lettuce grow because it likes colder temperatures. More beans in one of my towers. Lots and lots of beans. This year I planted a ton of artichokes and look at how tall this guy is. And way down in the middle, ooh, look at that artichoke coming out. I hope it stays warm enough to get a harvest from that guy. We're back in the front yard garden again, and I like to call this my wall of beans because, oh my goodness, they just keep producing. They won't stop. Look at that bad boy. He's giant. I haven't harvested beans from this area in I would say two or three days. So in that amount of time, I'm still getting so much production. Beautiful beans. I will have so many beans all winter and into next year. Delicious. Lastly, I wanna show you in my greenhouse. I've got several pumpkins that are almost getting ready to turn so I can harvest them. Underneath those pumpkins are volunteer potatoes I can't wait to get to. We've got some jalapenos that are still growing strong. And I experimented with corn this year. I didn't plant until June in here from seed. and. The corn is still growing strong in here. That's one of the volunteer tomatoes that is giant that I get to harvest from every day. And then the chickens get Swiss chard and kale almost every morning. Thanks so much for watching and make it a great day. Thank you so much, Stacy. And if you guys are interested in the perk memberships, I do mentoring Q and A's, about five of them a month, a couple live classes, this Grow As We Grow series. And again, it's a really nice community of people that are always helping each other out. Just wanna end that what I'm doing now too, aside from putting my beds to rest, is getting all of my compost piles filled up, leaves and grass. And I will just be doing that for the next four weeks, six weeks, is getting all these basically bins. This is a pallet bin that I made a while back. There's basic posts and fencing. It doesn't really matter what kind of setup you use. You can even just go with a pile on the ground and throw a tarp over it. But I highly recommend using the resources on your properties, neighbors leaves, families cut grass if you don't have grass, and getting compost started. It's going to make such a big difference for your garden come spring. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and I want to thank everybody that sent in videos. We do Grow As We Grow every month and here's a bunch of tomato plants that actually grew out of the compost piles and they're just, they're so good, they're absolutely delicious, but I knew they just weren't going to make it. 
But anyway, I think this is a signal that winter is just around the corner. Thanks for watching.